Welcome back. So, let's talk about relative age dating continued um, via this example. So, imagine this is a slice of Earth. Imagine if I take Earth, kind of slice it in half and look at it from the side. This is just a small little section of that. Small little section of the crust, I'm cut in half and I'm looking at it from the side, like layers of the cake. And I'm trying to figure out what is the uh, oldest to youngest. Now, in general, in general, um, when you're looking at these, the oldest, well, stuff at the bottom. Where's the youngest? Well, it's on the top. But you got to be careful. Sometimes other things occur. So uh, let's look at some stuff here. So when we're doing this, this looks at something called stratigraphy. Uh, stratigraphy is the science of rock layers and the process by which strata layers are formed. The principles that uh, dictate uh, stratigraphy were developed from the 17th to 19th centuries, so the 1600s, the 1800s, based upon the work by Nicholas Steno, James Hutton, um, uh, my main man Will Smith, among others. Uh, not that Will Smith, the geologic Will Smith. And there are six main principles of stratigraphy that help us figure out, well, what's the oldest to youngest. So again, <clears throat> looking at this, um, it's either A is the young A is the oldest or B is the oldest. So because they're both kind of at the bottom. Well, A looks like it kind of cut came up and cut through these layers that may have already been there. So that seemed to come later. And these stars indicate zone of contact metamorphism, meaning the edges of these rocks here have been burnt by A as it cut through. So it, Therefore, when I'm looking at this, uh, I'd say, oh, B is the oldest. And the reason is based on the principle of superposition, because in general, oldest layers at the bottom, the youngest layers are at top. So if I'm looking at this route crop, again, older is at the bottom, younger is at the top. Usually, not all, not all cases. So in this case, I would say uh, the oldest rock is B. Um, then C, then D, then E. But what about this A, this A thing? This is weird. This kind of this looks like igneous rock kind of just coming up and cutting through these other horizontal layers, which are most likely sedimentary layers, just the way they're laid down horizontally. These are all sedimentary rocks. So when you see horizontal layers, typically it's sedimentary rocks. Well, we got other stuff going on. The principle of cross-cutting indicates that layers of rocks must be older than any feature that cuts or disrupts it. So we have this big kind of mass of gray rock. We have this white stuff cutting through it and then this dark black stuff cutting through both of those. Or we have these rock layers and all of these faults cutting through. So what the principle of cross-cutting says is that anything that cuts through or disrupts rock layers uh, those had to come later. So the rock layers must be older, the stuff that cuts through them must be younger. So in that case, uh, we have the older rock here, younger, youngest. The reason the black's the youngest, it not only, so the white cuts through the surrounding gray rock, but this dark black cuts through the surrounding gray rock and the white stuff. So it cuts through everything, so it must be the youngest. And then when we're looking at this, if we're trying to figure out when did this fault occur before or after these rocks form, well, the rocks had to come first, and then the fault came along and cut through. Coming back to our example, since this A looks like it kind of cut up through these layers, these layers had to exist first. Let me give you an analogy. In order for me to run and break through a wall, the wall has to exist first. In order for the Kool-Aid man, if you remember this, to break through the wall and be like, oh yeah, the wall has to exist first. So therefore, in order for this igneous intrusion, for this magma to cut through something before it cooled and turned to rock, in order to cut through these layers, those layers had to exist first. It had to cut through something. So that's how I know it's, it's younger. So a correct order from oldest to youngest might be B, C, D, E, A, or alternatively, it could also be B, C, D, A, E. So these last two, we don't quite, without more information, we can't really say for sure, only because A doesn't cut all the way through E. 
maybe A is the youngest and it just this magma just stopped here. Or maybe it stopped there and that layer E came on later. That the exact order we can't be 100% sure on, but we can we can get pretty close. Other principles of stratigraphy, uh, uh, another one is the principle of lateral continuity. It says that sediments de are deposited in continuous layers. So sediments, and, and which would eventually become sedimentary rock, are formed in continuous layers. So looking at the Grand Canyon, so this layer of sedimentary rock is the same as that layer of sedimentary rock. So it's not like this sedimentary rock formed on this side of the river, this sedimentary formed rock formed on the other side. No, it was continuous at one point. The river cut down through it. So lateral means sideways. So the principle of lateral continuity, sediments were deposited in continuous layers sideways. It's not like this gap was always there. So all of these layers of the Grand Canyon kind of formed first, and then something came through and cut down through it. The principle of original horizontality, big words here, all sedimentary rocks are originally deposited horizontally, so flat layers. Therefore, if sedimentary rocks have been tilted, that came later. So first the sedimentary rock was deposited, then it was tilted. Another principle, the principle of inclusions. Rock fragments in another rock must be older than the rock containing the fragments. So rock fragments, like this one, must be older than the rock that contains it. So this rock had to exist first before it could get encased in this other rock. And this rock or mineral had to exist first before this other stuff kind of cooled or formed around it. So the principle of inclusions, again, this stuff is older, this stuff is younger. Older, younger, older, younger. And then um, I believe one last principle of stratigraphy, the principle of faunal succession. We won't touch on it too much in this class. Uh, you will in Geology 102 if you ever take it. But it states that fossil groups were succeeded by other fossil groups through time. So if I want to look for a particular fossil, say a trilobite, which is a very old ancient organism, well, that's going to be with some of the oldest rocks. Um, but if I'm looking for, you know, uh, uh, ferns or crinoids, well, these are younger fossils, so I should find them higher up where the younger rocks are. So if I'm looking for the oldest fossils, I look for the oldest rock. If I'm looking for younger fossils, I look for younger rock, depending on what I'm looking at. So kind of like the principle of superposition, but for fossils, you got the older stuff down here and the younger up there. We don't touch on this too much. We don't really talk about fossils in this class. So based on these principles, you can use these ideas and look at any cross section slice of earth and kind of put things from oldest to youngest, knowing a little bit about rocks, but also knowing that sometimes weird things happen. And again, these things are called unconformities. An unconformity is a gap in the geologic record, so something's missing. Uh, there's crustal deformation, erosion, sea level variation, for, and for some reason either stuff was, either rock was broken down and weathered and eroded away, stripped away, or they're just wasn't any rocks being created or deposited. So unconformities are this gap of missing information uh, of time or in process. So again, it could represent when deposition stopped, uh, an interval of weathering and erosion, moved something previously deposited rock, uh, deposition was later resumed, there's a change in process, uh, different types of rocks being formed, Igneous, now sedimentary rocks are being formed and they form different ways. So anyway, sometimes weird things happen. There's actually three types of unconformities. The first is probably the hardest one to pick out. It's called a disconformity. This is an erosional surface, so missing information, between two horizontal sedimentary rock layers. So if there's missing information between two horizontal sedimentary rock layers, it has to be sedimentary rock layers. That's a disconformity. You might not realize that there's stuff missing. You would have to know a little bit more, maybe absolute or geologic age of these rocks to understand there's a 
a gap between these two. So the unconformity is right there. Some some uh, some erosional surface. Some something was stripped away. So we have some some older rocks, some older sedimentary rocks. We have some younger sedimentary rocks, but there's a gap in time between when these uh, were laid down or when they when they formed. Again, it's hard to recognize. Fossils help, but if you're looking at a cross section and it's labeled as an unconformity and it's two sedimentary rock layers, it's disconformity. It's the definition. A nonconformity is missing information, not with sedimentary rocks and sedimentary rocks, but you get older igneous or metamorphic rocks below and younger sedimentary rocks above. So if there's that missing information or even it's just a change in process of these rocks, because they form differently, there's some gap in time, there's some change in process, something weird happened, something's missing. Why did this occur? Why are they changing from either metamorphic or igneous rocks below to sedimentary above? Something, something's, something's up. So it's called a nonconformity. An angular unconformity might be the easiest to pick out because you have, again, an erosional surface, so some missing information between, um, so right here is the unconformity. So you get the younger horizontal sedimentary layer rocks below and typically s tilted sedimentary rock layers uh, below. So horizontal rock layers above, tilted or angled sedimentary rock layers below. So the change in process, so that's known as an angular unconformity because the stuff below the unconformity is angled. How that occurs, um, so originally those angled up, folded up layers of what looks like sedimentary rock were originally deposited horizontally, the uh, principle of original horizontality. They were deformed, so in order to get folded up and bent, that came after. So they were deformed, so maybe some compressional stress, maybe at a convergent boundary, caused these layers to kind of fold up. Erosion occurred to kind of just cut off the top of it, weathering and erosion ground this hill or mountain down um, relatively horizontally. And then new layers of sediment were deposited on top that would eventually become sedimentary rocks. So below this unconformity, the rocks are angled, making it an angular unconformity. A great example of that is uh, towards the bottom of the Grand Canyon. We have, there's a number of unconformities. There's a disconformity. These are between sedimentary rock layers, some missing information. And then we have, again, we um, an angular unconformity because we have angled or tilted layers below horizontal layers, so an angular unconformity. And then we also have a non-conformity down at the bottom uh, here. This is internally in the Grand Canyon because we have igneous and metamorphic rocks below and then um, sedimentary rocks above. So we've got a little bit of everything going on in um, the Grand Canyon. And with this angular unconformity, it's not just any old regular angular unconformity. It actually has a name to it. They gave it a, a special name. That's, the type is still angular unconformity, but it's known as the great unconformity. Uh, the Great Unconformity is a dramatic boundary which presents a huge gap in the rock record and our understanding of Earth's history. This unconformity actually occurs worldwide. So depending on where you're at, the, around this time period, there's a hundred million to up to a billion years of rock missing, depending where you're at on the world at this time. Um, and uh, yeah, scientists are still trying to figure out why. There's a lot of new information actually within the past few days that I was reading about what they think happened uh, had to deal with um, uh, worldwide glaciers and then the, the earth being ground down uh, over vast period or over vast areas uh, but still nothing for sure so there's this big gap worldwide it was actually named uh, in 1869 by John Wesley Powell the first uh, during his first documented trip through the Grand Canyon if you're from Arizona, you may know that name, John Wesley Powell. You put it all together, you can now look at something as complex as this and say, oh, this is the oldest, this is the youngest, and here's the sequence of events. That's a pretty powerful thing in geology, just to look at a cross-section of the Earth and say, oh, yeah, this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and that, yeah. We'll do some practice on this in class. Now, I'm not expecting you to look at this right now and get it figured out. But we'll pause here. When we come back, we'll talk about geologic age.